Um, our final presentation of the day will be given by the team of Jim Brooker and Kurt Munson. Kurt Munson is the head of user services at the Galter Health Sciences Library at Northwestern University's Feinberg School of Medicine. Kurt has a master's in library and information sciences from the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. Jim Brooker has been at Galter Health Sciences Library for over seven years where he is an instructional design librarian. He works directly with faculty assisting them with various pedagogical projects does usability analysis, focuses on approaches to assessment, and provides multimedia solutions and support. Jim and Kurt will be speaking on user-initiated repurposing of library space. Um, okay, uh, so we uh, did a few repurposing and redesigns in our library. We are from Galter Health Sciences Library, so we're a, a specific type of academic library. Uh, in the summer of 2008. So go ahead with that. Um, some of the things I'm going to talk about have been explained in detail by other people throughout the day today. So this should be obvious at this point, uh, particularly after um, what uh, Patricia had to say. So we definitely have to start with the users. We have to start with uh, figuring out what they're doing. Um, <coughs> be that uh, following them around or just uh, using surveys or, or other techniques to, to observe them. Um, we could uh, ask them what they want, but it's also useful just to see what they are currently doing to see what we can do to work around that behavior. So the next one you'll see. Um, this was taken somewhat recently, and this is not the result of a, of a redesign right here. This is just what's going on. Uh, you can see, or at least the thing I'm noticing here, are these uh, great computers that we provided in the, in the back there that aren't being used, um, as well as the cubicles. People will will find their own space. They'll they'll define it to their own needs. These uh, people, they're all bringing laptops in, and we're in a situation where um, it's a mandate for the medical students to own laptops. So. This has um, become a mandate within the last year or two, so it's really starting to turn over now where we can reasonably expect people to bring laptops in the library. So I see group work going on here, um, staying away from the cubicles and going to the open spaces. I see everybody with plugged into something, um, and be that power, and also uh, connecting online as well, either through wireless or another means. So mobile computing is really generating our, our philosophy of space redesign. Um, by the third quarter of 2008, laptop sales equaled desktop sales, not just in the academic sector. That's, that's across the board, and that's pretty amazing for laptops to make that type of leap. And it's getting to the point where netbooks are, are considered to be a more popular item even while the rest of the PC sales are sinking. Um, Mobile browsers are on the upswing. Uh, the iPhone, everybody loves the iPhone. Everybody's copying the iPhone. Um, and the military loves the iPhone. The military have recently adopted the iPhone as a computing device, not as a phone, which when a large organization like that uh, goes with a tool like that, you should be on the alert. Uh, go ahead with that. So we start with the device. We don't go around trying to figure out, well, how can we update our, our computing right now? How can we, how can we um, uh, offer uh, the latest machinery? They're bringing this stuff in. So basically it becomes, how can we let people repurpose the space themselves? What can we offer them? So I'll go into some detail on what each of these are in, in a moment. The, this, is, this should be painfully familiar to all of you. Um, <laughs> uh, basically, that this is where you start. It's, uh, the power is everything. Um, and you, but this can be a scalable uh, approach as well. You don't have to rewire everything. Um, you can provide uh, extension cords and power strips. You can just make sure the library has plenty of these things on hand and people will be checking them out and extend, extending the space into other areas of your library. So you can see we have uh, 
examples of what an extension cord and power strip look like. Um, but basically, the extension cord is our third most popular item. We have, we have great resources throughout the library, but people want that. They are checking that out. That's the third most popular thing that we are circulating within our library. Um, and you can see all the people. They're all plugged in. They're, they need the power. Um, part of this is rooted in rethinking, um, thinking outside the box, really. Uh, I, there's a library recently that started putting power outlets in its lockers. Uh, we didn't do this yet, but it would be a great idea. Basically, what they did is they took lockers that they already had and they turned them into laptop charging stations that people could use while they're on lunch or while they're at the class. So that's just an example of taking what you already have and instead of ripping it down and building up something new, modifying it slightly and letting the people come in and do the rest of the modification for you just in their use. The other, the other side of this is the, the connectivity, um, be that wireless or wired. Uh, wireless is great. It tends to cost a little bit more money. Um, in our case, we have this wonderful old building that we're in, which is just full of concrete and stone. And wireless, we have found, uh, doesn't particularly enjoy the stone. It, it, uh, it gets a little hung up on it. So we have to have more, um, more points throughout the library. Uh, whereas if people can just check out these, these cables and just have the network ports, they've been doing that quite a bit. So we have to, um, the investment for us has been a little bit more. It's been growing for the wireless, even though that's where people want to add. Now we're adding something new to the equation here. We've got the laptop. We've got the portable device. So what we did was we decided to make the display portable as well. Instead of uh, cr retrofitting um, our reference room with, with large monitors, we decided to let the people decide where they wanted to retrofit things. So we took a monitor and put it on a cart, and now they're bringing it into spaces which we really didn't have to do anything else here except have a table. Uh, go ahead with the next one, and we'll see. Um, this is basically um, an LCD television on a cart, and we, can, we have a few of these. We can hook up a DVD player if you already own one. Um, but if people have a laptop, they have a DVD player as well. So I wouldn't worry as much about having playback units on all of these things as making sure that you have means to connect to them. Make sure you know what kind of uh, devices people have, laptops and, and other such things, and come be prepared for uh, giving them adapters and, and having that equipment ready to go. So it's being used for um, document sharing and collaboration and group work, uh, viewing videos. Um, PBL, problem-based learning, which is um, anybody in medical school will certainly understand what this is. Um, but that's a, that's a huge part of our curriculum, where it's a group effort to decipher uh, cases and decide the learning issues on them. So there's a lot of group work and also, uh, the PBL at our school has been focusing more on multimedia lately, so uh, we are wanting to, to provide them the means to incorporate audio and video and a high-resolution display for their PBL work. Um, people have also are able to check this out and collaborate outside of the library. So it's not just having them come in for that type of service. We've had um, groups take these, bring them to where they're already working, and come up with their presentation development outside, but we're providing something that they need in the process. We also use it for library promotion, as you can see here. That's a, becoming a, an increasingly popular thing, is to mount um, plasma displays and such in strategic areas in the library and use those for, for event promotion and, and such. Um, instead of mounting something, we're just using something we already have and finding yet another purpose for it, and simultaneously advertising that we have this at the same time. So, uh, another thing with wheels, wheels are a big theme today. I've, I've found um, are the whiteboards. So again, this is rooted in the observation of what we see people doing, particularly the students and the problem-based learning groups are really into the whiteboards, so we wanted to provide some whiteboards that people could take and move around into different areas in the library. The single pole one 
has uh, been moving around quite a bit because it's easier to move. You just grab the pole and move it. Uh, but consequently, it also the ease of movement has resulted in a kind of uh, dis-ease of stability. So um, we're finding that they're propped against walls a lot. So we'll find it in a room, but it's right up against the wall because people have to be pressing against it. Um, the easel is a little bit more difficult to move, but at the same time, it's a lot more stable. So uh, that's something to consider with your, your cost benefit. So here's, here's some before after action for you here. Um, we took an area where we had some, some journal stacks, and I'm not going to go into the, the details of, of what it takes to weed. Let's just say we weeded. Actually, we didn't weed. We just moved. Let's just say we moved it. Um, so uh, you can figure out how to do that on your own. Basically, we were able to take this area, which was not really used very much in the library, and you'll see in this next slide, uh, we transformed it uh, simply by removing some stacks, adding some chairs we already had, um, letting people roll in the whiteboard and the cart and even a spine if you so choose, and um, creating a, a collaborative space out of it, a, a group workspace. Um, I don't believe that these chairs have wheels, but someday they might because the wheelchair thing is a great idea that I think we're going to take from this. Uh, so um, one thing you want to do with this approach, when you have this space ready to go and you have the, the display and you've, you've put some money into it, you want to um, work on, try and find opportunities for promotion. Try and find events that you might be able to, to leverage to to get people together, things that they might already be interested in. And after we had put this together in the, in the summer and it went into the fall, um, we did have the, a, a nice opportunity for an event, which was uh, seen in this next uh, slide here. So <laughs> basically, the, uh, the inauguration was, was amazing, and it was a, a huge event for everyone. Everyone was very interested, and it. it was a real coming together. And uh, we had several areas of the library. We had the mobile monitor carts in several areas, including where you just saw uh, with antennas hooked up to them. These are televisions, so we could use tuners. So you might want to consider that if you're going to be uh, purchasing monitors. You might want to make sure that they have a television and tuner built into it in case you want to do some sort of event like this. Um, and we also have a, a teaching space that had already been built uh, where we uh, projected this information on it. Um, the one thing we didn't do, you'll notice, I don't have a picture of us doing this because we were all so enraptured in the event. We were all so in, in the moment that nobody thought to take a picture. I remember in my mind's eye turning around and, and thinking, wow, this is a great picture. And then, you know, unfortunately, I don't have a camera mounted inside of my eye, so I can't give you any of that right now. So make sure that you document these things that you do. Have, be ready with a camera. Be ready to to photograph this stuff so that you can represent it to people and give them ideas of what they can do with the space. Um, advertising it is one thing, but actually catching it in action is pretty important, and you should just uh, get into the habit of doing that. The next level that we took this was um, more of a curriculum focus. Uh, as I said, the, the problem-based learning in the medical curriculum is a really big deal, so um, they prefer to have a higher definition for their displays. Um, there's an element of privacy that they would like as they discuss cases, and, and so they prefer to meet in rooms versus out in the open. Uh, and a lot of them are using whiteboards. So if you look at the next one here, here's one of our conference rooms. We have several of these rooms, and this is a before shot here. So we can see we have, um, we have a lonely little computer over here. Um, we have a cork board. I don't know what anybody's going to do with that. And uh, a nice long table where everybody meets. So what you typically have is you have everybody meeting at the table, and you have a bunch of cords strung over to this one little outlet over here. So again, back to power. Uh, so after we did a little makeover of this, you can see that we have a, a plasma display right here mounted on the wall. We have a a uh, digital whiteboard, which is actually um, something that's outlined in, in another uh, presentation, so I'll go into that in a moment. Um, and we have something called a cable cubby in the middle of the table. So go ahead with uh, the next one. Um, 
So the dis display is a plasma screen, a uh, couple different wall mounts here. We did two rooms like this. One room had the whiteboard and one room did not because the whiteboard ended up costing a lot of money, so we just wanted to try it in one room at a time. Um, so one of the rooms has this mounted in a corner, so we needed the swing arm. The other has it mounted flush against the wall, so it was a little cheaper. And the security as well. Don't forget to put the little security alarm so that it has this kind of Harry Potter screaming effect if you try and remove it from the uh, wall there. So here's one in use in a PBL session. And you can see it there. They're um, incorporating multimedia content into their group session. Uh, they are able to connect right in the middle of the table here, connect uh, laptops to that, and as well as juice the laptops up with the power connections in the table. So uh, this didn't take a lot of prep for the students and the faculty to jump into it. They saw the outlets. They saw the power button. They plugged it in and turned it on. They just moved right into the, that paradigm. So in the table are these cable cubbies, which you can see it basically more than doubled the amount of power available in the rooms. Uh, we also have uh, VGA connection and ether Ethernet connections here and AV, typical AV connections as well. Um, it was important to have the Ethernet connections and not just rely on wireless. As I said, the walls are thick and stone. So um, we were having issues with people having wireless dropouts, and this solved those issues, and people are using these quite a bit. Um, that's the initial cost. The labor jacked it up quite a bit, which um, basically we have concrete floors. I've heard concrete mentioned quite a bit today. So that can really lead to some, some uh, cost issues and some variance between libraries. Uh, so here's one in use. Um, basically, this is, this is typically how we are seeing these rooms in use all the time. Sometimes they'll use the displays. Sometimes they'll use the whiteboard. But more often than not, they're going to be plugged in. And um, that, if you can't afford the rest of this equipment, that's where you have to go, really. That's where you have to start is with the connection and um, the Internet provision. So we also used a copy cam uh, pro image capturing system. Um, the nice thing about this is that the web server is built into it. it. It needs a static IP and a dedicated network port, but um, it's not like an ongoing service that you subscribe to, and people can access it from wherever. And it also has a USB port in the wall here where you can save it to a flash drive as well. Um, you can see that it was a lot more than the whiteboard itself. So we were having. Notice that a lot of the PBL students were taking photographs of, of their, their whiteboard assignments and um, distributing them amongst each other, or they were using cell phone photographs. So we thought that this was something that they could really use, which you'll see in the next slide here. Uh, an example, not just an example of how the whiteboard works. This is an untouched photo, so it does it corrects for the shading and such. But also that concept mapping has been decreed that all the PBL students have to use concept mapping. So it's not just that they have to concept map, they have to provide evidence of the concept map. So they were, some of them were mapping out on chalkboards and then carefully redrawing that on a piece of paper and then scanning that or whatnot. Some of them were taking the cell phone pictures and whatnot. This really helps them out. This is, is really uh, pushing that to the next level for them. And uh, you'll see in this next one, uh, we have the, you know, nice, the ubiquitous student happiness shot here. Um, what, basically what I want to get at with this is that when you put these tools out there, the students tend to ad adopt them pretty quick. But they also tend to use them in ways that you don't expect, which is actually pretty good. Uh, they, they haven't abused anything. They're just doing things with it that we didn't see coming. So um, they are partnering with us in this, these redesign goals that we have. We're leveraging their equipment that they're bringing in, but we're leveraging their ingenuity as well. So um, this is just a case of that. They, uh, the PBL students have used it, but also in the, the PT program they've used it. We've had uh, group meetings, people, basically a lot of uh, support across the board for this. So here's, here's some cost here, uh, just a, a general outline of, of the, the cost of doing this for two rooms. 
uh, with a whiteboard and copy cam in just one room. So the cost at that point isn't too bad considering the level of support we're able to offer these people. Um, but there is a little uh, plus right over here. So when we see on the next slide, um, the big variable for us was labor. The big variable was the, the concrete floor that we had to dig into. Um, and you don't dig into a concrete floor in the middle of the day. You do that after hours and with university labor and overtime. So it was kind of a, a costly event. Um, but again, the connectivity, the electrical connectivity and the ethernet, um, that's what they're using more than anything else. So that was actually worth it. And if we do it again to any other rooms, that's where we're gonna start, is to make sure that those tables have all those jacks in the middle of the table so that people don't have wires all over the place. But if you can't afford that, you'll see on the next uh, screen, you can basically repurpose these other things I've been talking about. People have been bringing these into the other rooms. They've been, they've been retrofitting the rooms themselves um, to be out of need and of jealousy, I suppose, of, of the uh, lucky students who get to reserve the, the other two rooms. But we're finding that uh, the mobility of these units is, are, is really working out and, and allowing people to use that. And it's not just the, the PBL students that are using these, it's other students as well and other faculty, so you're able to reuse this without uh, it just being for one purpose. The wireless um, is still a factor that you're gonna wanna consider though as far as cost goes. So back to, back to our students over here. Um, these are user-driven decisions that we're making, but they're also leveraging the users. They're, they're user participatory decisions. Um, and that's really important. That's not, it's not just a matter of doing the survey and the analysis and thinking, well, what do they want? Okay, now let's build it. It's a matter of finding out what tools they would like to use and letting them do some of the work with you. So uh, the next slide, basically we, we do have some assessment that's ongoing for this. Um, Kurt's gonna talk about that for a moment and I'll talk about a couple of ones at the end here. Uh, we barcode all of the equipment that we check out and we then every so often do a count to see what's being used. The power strips, they actually originally bought the power strips to put them on the mobile monitor carts so that they could plug them in, but the power strips didn't stay on the, mo they, they didn't work, and it was too difficult to send them back to CDW, so said our head of IS. So what we did was we, she said, well, we've got these, do you want them to put at the CERC desk? And I said, sure, so we put them down there. One person came up one time and got one. It was total viral marketing. They're one of the most popular things that we have now. And we have the numbers coming out of the CERC system to show us that and to, to, to prove how much these things are being used by the students. And we didn't have to do any effort at all to start collecting statistics on it because if we deal with them as an item in the library system, there's, there's numbers for it. So, oh, you, okay, good. We reorganized this. <clears throat> yeah, if you wanna to go to the next slide. Uh, yeah, so I mean, you can see, now the ethernet cables we've had since the beginning of time, so that's why the number on them is so high. The power strips have been out, there are three of them, they've been out for a couple of months, that's it. <laughs> it's incredible, so, next. Oh yay, my map. The other thing that we did after going through and making these changes to the libraries, we thought, okay, fine, you know, is it worth it? What are they doing with it? So I came up with this space study where every hour on the hour, much to my staff's annoyance, uh, they go around and they just simply make hash marks where people are sitting at that time during the day and the other thing that we note, and this is bizarre, where the electrical outlets are. And the reason this is bizarre is because nobody's using them. Normally, it's an oasis in the desert. We've got this whole big, beautiful library, but in the whole reading room, there's only two electrical outlets. Guess where they always sit? 
right over there. The other thing that we noted is if they were using a laptop. Um, so we've done this two weeks so far, every hour on the hour, and it's shown us, it's basically a snapshot of what are the users doing in the library at that point. And no, we didn't need IRB clearance. So <clears throat> I turn it back over to Jim. Right. Well, you can, see, you can see from the laptop usage here that, um, Again, they're using, we're, we're finding uh, that they're using the power, they're using the, the uh, online access a little bit more than they're using the um, expensive plasma displays, which they are using, but it's a matter of uh, if you need to triage this, these decisions and, and uh, make the initial decision go with the power. So the next one here, um, we do have feedback forms that we have on the monitor carts themselves. We have them in the rooms. We give them out when people reserve the rooms. So. Uh, and we also have an online version you'll see on the next slide here, uh, which is basically we've, we contact the people who have reserved the rooms and ask them after the fact what they thought of, of their experience. We have been rolling this out incrementally. I think that it would be a, a better idea to have this stuff ready to roll out when you roll the, the rooms out and, and your, your changes out. So, uh, and even better to, to have the assessment ongoing even before the facts that you have some comparative data. Uh, the next one here, um, but just anecdotally, we're not having a lot of support problems with this, which is great. We were worried that this would be a drain on our staff, that we'd be having people running around, showing people how to turn televisions on and, and other such things. People seem to understand that the on button turns the television on, and they understand what those jacks connect to in the tables. So they're actually, the, um, we did have some staff training that was required, so take a little extra time to make sure that all of your staff understand this stuff. But at the same time, um, take the time to encourage your staff to use it as well, because if, if your staff become more interested in, in these types of things, uh, the monitor carts and, and those types of things, they'll become advocates for it. So uh, you don't have to do quite the same uh, type of marketing, because you'll have people encouraging the users to use this stuff. So that's pretty much where we're at right now. What do you find is the need for printing in a laptop environment? Uh, the need for printing in a laptop environment? Kurt can probably answer that. They definitely need it. We don't have wireless printing yet, but when we do surveys of the users, that's the thing that they want more than anything else in terms of computing. But we're, we're in the process of working on it, and by the beginning of next academic year, it'll be out. We have two giant, huge color printers that also do black and white. They went out the beginning of this academic year. The one in the reference, they're, they're twins. They're identical models. They're supposed to do 100,000 prints. Uh, over multiple years before they have to basically be completely rebuilt. We hit 170,000 prints on the reference room one a couple of months back. So uh, the notion that it's all paperless is clearly not the case. Uh, a couple of questions. One, um, I'm very interested in the, in the barcoding of equipment. We, in, in our library, we uh, have two LCD projectors which are some of the most popular items. Uh, but it, I, I don't think you had those as, as part of your thing. What, what's the um, advantage of having uh, the, the fixed plasma screens rather than have a, an LCD projector for these, uh, for these rooms? Uh, he's asking about the advantage of uh, having the fixed plasma screens over the LCD projectors and the fact that they have uh, circulating projectors at his library. Um, we do have circulating projectors. Uh, we did not uh, consider that to be mentioned in this type of discussion. Um, the advantage is repurposing the room and getting people to think differently about the room. Either mounting a projector in the room or having the display in the room makes them think, hey, this is where I can go to do some multimedia work to do that type of group collaboration versus uh, where can I check this type of thing out and, and what do I do with it now? Um, tangentially, we 
barcoded the uh, remotes for the plasmas and simply as a security measure, and that ended up being a great way to just measure how much people were using this stuff. The uh, LCD projectors are better known, and people tend to use those more frequently. Um, I mean, their circulations, I mean, we've also had them for quite a while, so their circulations are up above 1,000. The mobile monitor carts, we've only recently allowed them to go outside of the library because I had a student come to me and he said, well, can I take this next door? And I thought, no, it's only for in-library use. And then I thought, well, that's stupid. <laughs> uh, and we let him take him out. And that's growing, too. I, there was one of them we kept behind the circulation desk. And of course, nobody ever would ask to use it. And I put a sign on it that said, you know, please use me. Nobody used it. The only thing that ever happened was a spider crawled on it and sat in the middle of the sign. <laughs> For the entire time it was behind the circ desk. We moved it out from behind the circ desk. They started using it. The first group that took and moved it someplace, and somebody else decided that that was okay. So it's, it's gradually growing. I think they're going to become extremely popular. We just haven't reached that tipping point yet. What I also want to do is you know, put arms on them, you know, like draw arms, and then have them holding a banner that says, take me to P your PBL session to see if that can't get them moving and used other places. So they're not actually even check out. They're, they're, they're free range. Yeah. They're free range in the library wherever the students or whoever decided to put them that day. So we had a question way in the back and then we'll take yours. Um, I, for whatever reason, I'm always concerned about the impact that a lot of the social collaborative spaces have on people who are trying to study alone in a more quiet environment. And with all of this mobile technology, I'm wondering if you've got any negative feedback uh, the question, in case everybody didn't hear it, was, has all of this mobile technology that we've introduced uh, created a negative, uh, <clears throat> uh, not backsplash, but uh, have, we, have we received negative comments of people that still want to be in quiet places and be able to study that way? I haven't heard anything like that. There are spaces in the library where people can study quietly, and the best place to study quietly is in the reading room that only has a single outlet in it. So in that case, you're not going to be interrupted by anybody doing anything collaboratively. So, and yes. Is the, the table that has the, the cable cubby in the middle of it, does that table then have to be fixed to the floor? I'm assuming an outlet underneath. Is that the, the, the question was the tables that have the cable cubby in them, does that need to be attached to the floor? According to electrical code in the city of Chicago, yes. If we were in Evanston, which is where the uh, main campus for Northwestern is, no. But ours is, the, they put the cable, they cut a hole in the table, they put the cable cubby in, the electricians came and did wiring, and then the Carpenters had to come and build custom wood to surround all of this stuff to connect it into the floor. So it's not going anywhere anytime soon. Just, just a, maintenance, a maintenance tip. I haven't heard this today. And, uh, after about a year of having refurbished uh, group study rooms, whiteboards, monitors, we, our maintenance folks have come and try to pin off the walls beside the whiteboard. Some reason our medical students could not stay within the lines. <laughs> 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 but, but we had to repaint those rooms every year. And what some of us were arguing for is there's a, you probably know this, a whiteboard wallpaper that goes from ceiling to the floor. And, and we, we debated about that, and it's not that expensive. It, it would, we thought it would be a much easier to maintain. Just go ahead and do the whole wall. Did you look into that, or has anybody looked into that? We haven't gotten to that point. We do have that? Okay. Yeah. We, we, we've done that in a couple of places. Um, and in our language center, that's the day we've done that. We've covered entire walls of that. You still have the cleaning problem. Because 
because it's not because it's a wallpaper material. It's not the same as a shiny board. But the nice part about that is, is you peel it off and you put it on another. One. Oh, it's, it's wallpaper. Do a NASCAR. Are you saying that it's uh, stains or something? Well, it's just, it's just like just like leaving marker material on right. a whiteboard for a while. Oh, okay. It's used heavily. It's it just gets as grungy as whiteboards can do. Yeah. I believe there was another question over on this side of the room. How we're securing them? Yes, to the ceiling. Oh, there, it's it's actually not secured to the ceiling. It's there's a camera that points. There's this metal thing that comes out of the wall that's probably about yay long that has the camera in it. It's bolted to the wall. They can't. They. Okay, if they went downstairs in the basement and they got the ladder and they took it up to the second floor and then they like you know. <laughs> Hold on it for a really long time and outweighed me by a couple of hundred pounds, then they might be able to get the thing off of the ceiling, but it's not going to do them any good because it won't work with anything else. Oh, they just want to sell. <clears throat> yeah, I, yeah, we haven't had that issue yet. So. All right, well, thank you.